services in this city. And do you know, since the last five years, there's been an increase every year in infant mortality. Do you know that? And that's a result of austerity that the government has brought in. All the impact of all the welfare benefit cuts that people have had to endure. All the low wages that there are in this city. 25% of people in this city earn below the real living wage. They earn below the real living wage. They're on agency contracts. They're on zero contracts. They earn work five hours one week, 20 hours another week, 30 hours another week, no hours another week. How are you supposed to support your family when you don't know how much money you're going to earn in any one week? Our people in this city are struggling and suffering under that. There's an increase in mental health amongst children in our city. There's, two, there's an increase in premature babies. There's an increase in the, in the, in the reduced weight of babies where they are born. And you have to ask yourself, is this a country and is this a government that doesn't like children? Because every single thing they've done affects those people in our society that are most precious to us, our children. We have 1,200 children in our city as of today that are in care of the local authority. 1,200 children. We have another 2,200 children the social workers have to be involved with because of the crisis of problems and difficulties that families and parents are facing in our city. And now, and now they want to take free school meals away from children. I sat last year on a board, a commission, with the Children's Commissioner, I'll tell you about her in a minute, the Children's Commissioner, and they were told, the question was, how can we help those children growing up north? And I said to her, children up north are running around with clogs, you know. So they haven't got shoes on their feet. This is an issue of poverty. This is an issue across the whole country. It's just in this city, there's more of it than there is in parts of the south. And I turned to Esther McVeigh, who was also an advisor on that committee. And I said to her, how do you expect children to do well in school when they're going to school hungry and the reason they're going to school hungry is because of decisions that you made when you were employment minister in the last, co last coalition government thank god margaret greenwood knocked her out and now we've got to endure the fact that that woman is back again and now she's taking school meals away those of you who remember thatcher George Remember that she started a political life on. by taking milk away from children. Thatcher, the milk snatcher, used to call her. Esther McVeigh now is taking school meals away from children. So I wrote to the Children's Commissioner yesterday and I said to her, what are you going to say to Esther McVeigh, who sat on his advisor on your panel, about the impact of, of poverty on children, about her taking free school meals away from children? And she sent me back a letter which said, on the one, the government is saying 50,000 more children are going to have school meals when these changes are introduced, whereas the Children's Society said there's going to be a million who are going to lose free school meals. Who would you believe? The government or the Children's Society? So we should write to the Children's Commission, and I will give everyone here her email address and remind her of a responsibility that she has to look after children across the whole country. We are trying to do it here. She's got the voice of government. She should be telling them that taking away school meals from children is wrong. So it's great to see everybody here today. And we've got to keep this going because this isn't going away. Every child should have their free school meal if they, are, if they deserve it, if they're, if they're in poverty and they can't afford to provide meals for everybody. There's somebody here, Jean, who works up in the Gems, who's a youth club, has ended up being a feeding station for young people, particularly in the school holidays, when children can't even have any access to, to meals. If you go around the city and look at all the junior schools, you'll see now they're doing breakfast clubs, not because they want to offer parents the opportunity of dropping their kids off early into school, because they know for a fact that children are coming into school hungry. This is an absolute total disgrace. This has got to change. This cannot happen in our society where people are left in destitution and affecting our children more than anyone. So thank you all for coming and let's keep it going because this has got to stop.
apart from you. I've worked in food banks. I understand how food banks are run. And the big industries, the big industries pay not to waste the food and put it into the ground. They pay food banks to put it out. And it's a fucking mystery. It's a massive show. And yeah, well, if I just take this above here a bit now, uh, we'll just go through the crowd a bit. So, uh, oh, people, sorry, sorry. So this demo was suddenly called. There's all this this chalk on the um, on the floor. It was suddenly called because um, of what's happening, which is the threshold by which the government will give families free school meals has fallen to a requirement that that they only earn seven and a half thousand pounds a year. It's not that much. Most decent wages got at least start ten thousand pounds a year. If you've got a, 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 a job where you could actually spend a bit of your money, as not just pay all the basics, it's probably over fifteen thousand a year for that. So you've got to have under seven and a half thousand pounds a year. Even before I asked you an interview about, it, I kind of understand the point. That's hardly any money before you get any help at all with the free school meals and. And I've just heard anecdotally what 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 is the typical cost of free school meals? Just say you're over the seven and a half thousand pound threshold. Well, um, one person said, um, I think based on Elsevier Port, it's twenty pounds a week. So imagine having such a low income as that. It's so, it's kind of the sickness benefit level or less, um, and having to spend twenty pounds a week on top of everything else suddenly, but when you didn't before, because this is obviously going to be going to come in and change people's weekly income if they're having to suddenly spend £20 a week on the school meals. So that's what I'm going to ask in the interview. We're going to ask somebody. So there you go. That's the coverage here. It's Liverpool. It's Williamson Square, right under the tower of Radio City, which isn't broadcasting as much from it as it used to. But that's where Pete Price and other presenters sit. And it's a city with a social conscience time and time again. That is Liverpool, here, Williamson Square, Michael Farry for 107 News, uh, with you on Facebook as well, live, this Tuesday evening.